why the party animals are out tonight, right? Hey, I'm so glad you joined us. I know all these people are crazy to be out at this hour. We have for you tonight in person, Mr. John Parr, who will be here. <laughs> Sheila, the old Sheila people, ready for the world, will be here. We've got Mr. Bob Dubeck, but let me tell you about that in a little while. I, I know why they're all here. This is the place to be nighttime, but if you're home and watching, and maybe you've gotten home from a date early, that's a little surprising. If you're uh, celebrating your anniversary and you're home and you're watching, that's, uh, that's really surprising. Those of you who are on your honeymoon and you're watching, that's not only surprising, you're in a lot of trouble, folks. I have Dr. Root's home phone number for you, but first off, let me ask you to please greet as we open the show with a gentleman I have laughed at or laughed with, I guess a better way to put it, and enjoyed for a lot of times. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Dubeck. <laughs> Gotta ask you guys a question right off the top. You like to get freaked out? All right, go ahead, hurry up, come on. Let's get it over with now, is that it? I like to have fun, I think we're too serious nowadays. Next time you're at like a family gathering, you're talking to your mom and dad at the dinner table, you wanna have some fun, crack up the table? You look at your mom, you go, yeah, mom? No, everything's fine, hmm? Mm -mm. No, everything is just perfect. I guarantee you'll crack the whole table up. Your mom will still slap the hell out of you, but it will crack the whole table up. So that's the idea, we gotta have some fun. We are too serious nowadays, let's have some grins, what do you say, huh? Tomorrow, you wanna have fun? You driving down the street, see people at a bus stop waiting for a bus? Drive past them, roll your window down, yell out, hey! Bus ain't coming today. Roll it up, take off. <laughs> you check out of a hotel room before you leave, rearrange the furniture. It'll freak out the maids who come in to work the next day. And they don't speak English, so they can't complain to anybody. <laughs> now, the next time you're in a department store, pretend you work there. There's always somebody who comes up and he says, hey, you work here? Yep. <laughs> How much is that television set? <laughs> take it, it's yours, go ahead, it's on the house. Walk out the doors with it. If those lights start flashing, it just means you're special, all right? Have fun all the time. Sometimes I have sick fun. Sometimes I get a hearse and I drive around just to pick up hitchhikers. Yeah, you wanna sit in the back? Go ahead, stretch out. Bus ain't coming. I got a great sick costume for Halloween. Put a chair on your head, go out as used gum. Think about it. Next time you're on an airplane, you wanna have some fun. Sneak back with the stewardess and have their microphone, make this announcement. Hi there, this is your captain speaking. We're at 30,000 feet. If you folks on the left-hand side of the airplane, look to your right. You folks on the right-hand side, look to your left. You'll find you idiots are looking at each other. <laughs> We've actually figured out a way to get the country out of debt. We enact a new law. One law, one law only. We call it the stupid law, which means if you catch somebody doing something stupid in public, you can charge them five bucks. Get this country out of debt in about a month and a half, wouldn't it, huh? <laughs> you can go in an office building, push a button in the elevator, the elevator button is lit. Somebody will walk right in front of you and push that button again. Hey! Five bucks, let's go, pay up, pal, come on. That damn thing isn't coming any faster, let's go, five bucks. You owe me five bucks, you did something stupid, I caught you. It's the law. What law? The stupid law. Oh, you never heard about it, you know why? Because you're stupid, that's why. Now you owe me 10 bucks, all right, let's go, pay up. And he pays you, proves he's stupid, charge him five more, come on. I was just down south where people have a southern accent, obviously, and they talk like this. It's kind of a neat way of talking, isn't it? But you only want to talk with a southern accent when you're in the south. You don't walk up to New York going, boy, boy, look at here, you got skyscrapers and, uh, what's that, a bus on tracks goes underground, that's a subway? Well, I'll be damned. People in New York go, hey, five bucks, let's go, pay up, pal, come on. But people in the South are stupid, it just sounds stupid, the accent. In fact, they're more intelligent than we are. Because when they talk, they don't move their lips. It's like a bunch of ventriloquists down there, isn't it? Some poor jerk from New York walks in a bar in Montgomery, Alabama, a bunch of rednecks look at him, they go, how you doing there, city slicker? Yeah, I'm gonna kick your rear end right to the state line. <laughs> There's 10 of us here, you gotta figure out which of us is talking to you too, don't you, huh? huh? <laughs> I grew up in the South. I'm a Catholic. I'm like most Catholics, when I grew up, I quit. <laughs> I believe in the Freddie Flintstone religion now. Do unto others as they yabba dabba do unto you. <laughs> right. I don't know, it's just that um, each religion has its own criteria to get into heaven, right? I mean, if you're Catholic, you want to get to heaven, you can't have sex unless you're married. If you're Jewish, you want to get to heaven, you can't eat pork. Now, come on, if you had to make a choice, <laughs> what do you think it'd be? Well, I'm gonna abstain from luau's for the rest of my life. All right, Padre? I'm gonna go for the flesh picnics right over here. <laughs> Personally, I think Jesus had a great sense of humor. He had to. Of course, you couldn't tell him a joke. You start telling Jesus a joke, you go, hey, I've heard it. <laughs> Not only that, I wrote it. <laughs> but the whole idea is to have fun down here. In fact, I want to die having fun. I want to die freaking somebody out. You know where I think it could be a good place to die? A restaurant. Right next to a kid who won't eat his vegetables. <laughs> right when his mother says, come on, Billy, eat your broccoli, it's not gonna kill you. That's when I go, boom! 
I fall dead with a little piece of broccoli hanging out of my mouth, <laughs> just to wig them out. Let me show you a couple of magic tricks here right before I go. First of all, we'll show you how to make a needle disappear. Why? <clears throat> Found it. Okay. Take a needle. Hold it chest high. Grab some magic waffle dust. Sprinkle it on the needle. The needle disappears. Okay, I'll do a better one. I'll show you how to make a cracker disappear. You take a cracker. Hold it chest high. Reach in the air. Grab some magic waffle dust. Sprinkle it all over the cracker. The cracker disappears. Now. Now I show you how to make people disappear. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, I need to borrow a couple of cigarettes. Somebody throw a box of cigarettes, I need to borrow two. Come on, toss a pack, let's go. Somebody throw a pack. <laughs> toss them up. Okay. Need to borrow two cigarettes? Show you how to make people disappear. Two cigarettes? Good, two left, great, thanks. Now, <laughs> now we show you how to make people disappear, watch. Julie Banjos. Actually, these are curb feelers when you're real drunk, you know? Thank you. Remember. Thanks a lot. Remember, gang, laugh. Laugh all the time, because if you laugh, you never die. You guys are going to be dead tomorrow, aren't you, huh? And remember when you do laugh. Laugh when everybody else is ticked off, because that makes it a hell of a lot funnier for you. <laughs> You're in a traffic jam, the guy next to you is leaning on his horn, cussing at you through the window, just turn over and go. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure your door's locked, all right? Thanks a lot. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Zubek, fantastic. Don't go in now, John Parr's coming right up. <laughs>